Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. Now, one of the options with my X-Carve CNC machine is to fit a DeWalt router. That will give it extra power and means I'll be able to tackle some more interesting projects. I'm very grateful to DeWalt here in the UK for providing uh, the router for this task, and it's the D26204. In fact, it comes in three variants, a D26200, then 203, and then this one, 204. And I thought, well, whilst I've got it here and before I mount it in the CNC, uh, it would be appropriate to, to give you a quick rundown on what uh, this gutsy little machine can do. Let's take a, a look at what we get in the 26204 kit. And this is the most comprehensive of the three kits available. Uh, obviously, it comes in a, a, a storage box like this, uh, quite sturdy. And then you have the main writer itself on a plunge base. There's a parallel fence uh, which works with this uh, plunge base and there's also a dust collection adapter again designed for this. You also get the fixed base and that also comes with its own uh, basic parallel fence and a dust collection adapter. There's a round sub base which is designed to fit on the bottom of the fixed base uh, and also a centering pin and a cone as well as a 17 millimeter guide bush and of course it comes with a tool uh, to fix the uh, cutters in place and of course you get uh, an instruction manual now this is a 900 watt writer and the speed can be adjusted between 16,000 and 27,000 rpm Collet size in the UK is a quarter of an inch, but uh, I've noted that quite a few UK suppliers uh, do sell an eight millimeter collet for this machine. And under here, when you turn the machine on, there are a pair of LED lights. I can show you exactly what you would get if you buy the 26200. It comes with the fixed base, it's exactly the same power unit as uh, the other kits have. It comes with a dust extraction uh, port here and also uh, the basic fence. And fixing the dust port is very simple. Uh, it fits into this uh, space here at the front. And once it's in position, there are two screws, one here and one on the opposite side here. Now fixing the fence is also very straightforward and simple. Uh, it comes with two screws which are just uh, placed here in uh, sort of holding positions as it were. And you may see a pair of uh, threaded holes here on the machine. You're going to thread uh, this into here like so. And then we're going to go underneath and there are two uh, places where you can put the screws there and there. And all you do is screw the screws in. And so that fence is now uh, fixed on there. Now, it calls itself the basic fence, uh, and I think anyone uh, would wish to uh, put a piece of wood across here uh, so that you've got a, a better registration on something when you're doing a, a long groove or whatever it might be. Now, in order to install a cutter, the easiest way is to take the motor mechanism out uh, from the base, undo this uh, latching clip here, and then there are a pair of little clips on each side. You squeeze these in and then lift the barrel of the body out like so. There's a spindle lock here. Insert your cutter and then start tightening by hand and then finish it off uh, with the spanner. And there that is back in position. Now the height adjustment when you're using the fixed base is actually very simple. Uh, there are three parts. We've got the motor body, uh, we've got this ring that slips over the motor body, and we've got the fixed base. Now, this part uh, has a screw thread on it, and that matches the screw thread uh, which is on uh, the motor body. And if I'm very careful, I'll get this started. And now you can see this is moving up and down. And this large nut uh, will sit on top of the fixed base. And you see these two clips, one either side. Uh, when everything's put together, these clips clip onto uh, the top rim uh, of the fixed base. There it goes, and I've operated those clips. So that's now held together. 
In order to adjust the height of the router, which has got the router bit in it, all we do is rotate this giant nut. So if I were to just get it so it's touching the tabletop, and I can do that by judgment, I can feel it. You see this uh, yellow uh, ring here, that, that is a movable scale. And on the black uh, nut, uh, there is a place just under the DeWalt sign uh, where there is a pointer. And if you line up the uh, scale so it's level with the pointer, that's our zero point, and that's with uh, the tool resting on the table. Now, if I now raise the nut, which is effectively lowering the tool, I can see how much I'm doing it by looking at the graduations on the scale. And I've now moved this to the three millimeter mark. And those graduations are sufficiently far apart that you can probably make a judgment, I reckon, to about a tenth of a millimeter, which is pretty good. And once it's in the place that you want, and I've set that on three millimeters, you make sure it's properly pressed down and then lock it off. And there is our setting three millimeters for the depth of the cut that I would be making. And so we're now ready to do a test cut. And there we have a very clean hole. Notice absolutely no dust. Now I've just uh, fitted a, uh, an OG bit in here. Uh, and yes, I did have the plug out of the uh, socket when I did it. And now I want to get this adjusted uh, for height. And that's that adjustment done. And I'm pretty happy with, with that. I'll give it a try. And you can see that's lovely. Just a job. And that bit of dust that's coming out to the right hand side on this side of the wood, you can't really uh, do anything about that unless you have some additional form of dust collection uh, on the outer side of the cutter. Now the second variant of the machine is the D26203. Now I'm just going to remove this turret and I'm going to take off this adjusting ring here. And I'm going to place this back on there like so. And I'm going to put that to one side. Now, when you buy the uh, 26203, it is the plunge base version. And I'll just lock that in there. And this kit comes with uh, a fence. And this time it's a more substantial fence, more like your ones you're used to. Uh, and it also comes with this uh, dust extraction adapter. Now to fit this adapter, it's very simple, you just offer it down into the recess here. Uh, there is a clip here, uh, just note that now, and then you push down and that clips in place. And then there's a screw with a washer, uh, which you then use to hold that in position. To remove it, obviously take the screw away, and then you need to press in on that lever there, uh, and then that allows you to take that out. And I've still got my um, Roman OG cutter in there, uh, so I'm now going to repeat uh, the last cut I did on this same piece of wood. Depth setting on this model of the machine is very easy. There's a turret down here where you can adjust these steps, and it's against these steps that the depth stop uh, would rest. And uh, by using the depth stop, uh, you can do very fine adjustments to height. Now on the back here, there's a, a plunge control uh, and basically when you have your thumb on this fully, uh, then it moves freely. As soon as you let go, it stays in that position. And the way to go about this is to eyeball it until it's in approximately the right position. Just there. Uh, and then I'm gonna set this uh, depth stop like so. And if I need to make a small adjustment now, uh, to go downwards, I can loosen this and raise this up uh, using this scale here, and that's in millimetres. Now, when I've got it uh, too deep, uh, then I need to allow uh, the uh, mechanism to come up a little bit, and in order to do that, 
uh, what one does is sets this on say 10, release the plunge and then lower this until it's on say 9, like so, and then repeat the plunge and then it's not quite so deep. And remember when you release the lever here uh, it's locked in position. So there you are, it's free to move, and then push down, let go, and it's locked. And there we have, absolutely super. And again, dust will come out from uh, this side uh, because we've got no means of sucking it from the side here. But that's a lovely cut. And this time I've put a half inch cutter in here and I want to make a, a groove which is about four millimeters deep. So this is how I go about it. First of all, I'm gonna plunge until my cutter hits the surface of the wood. I'm then gonna undo the uh, adjuster here so it comes down and is touching the top of the turret. And I've got my uh, index here on zero. I'm now gonna raise that up to the four millimeter mark and then tighten this. So there's now a gap here of four millimeters. Now, if you wanted to be absolutely precise, you could take a drill bit of the right size, put it in there and then tighten that up. And that would then give you a very accurate uh, measure. It needn't be a drill bit, it could be anything else, a piece of wood that you've just cut uh, and uh, which is gonna be inlaid into here or whatever it might be. So use something in that gap and you'll get it spot on. And this time we're using the fence. I'm just gonna adjust it to where I want it to be and then lock this off here and here. Get my air defenders and we're ready to go. And remember, at the moment, our plunge is set at the same depth as the surface of the wood. So my very first operation is to plunge down uh, the four millimeters uh, to start our cut. And there's that cut with the half inch uh, writer. Now, uh, you may have noticed I did a slight whoopsie here, and that's simply because uh, the fence uh, has uh, that gap in the middle. Uh, and if I were gonna be using this a lot, I would replace those two pieces of plastic with a continuous piece of wood, as I did with the uh, other fence. But apart from that, a nice even cut. And at the start of the cut, as always when you're trenching, you're gonna get a little bit of material come out along the uh, cut. Uh, and at the end, you'll probably find a small buildup of material. Uh, you can overcome that by doing a second pass, and usually you'll be able to suck up that uh, leftover material on that second pass. Well, I've shown you all three variations of this now. The uh, 2.6 200 comes with a fixed base, this dust collector, and this straightforward simple fence. Uh, the 2.6 203 uh, comes as a plunge uh, base router, uh, with uh, the dust port and the uh, more substantial fence. And then finally, the 26204 comes with all of these pieces, uh, plus the uh, circular base and the uh, copying ring, a centering mandrel, uh, and of course, uh, with the full kit, uh, you get the uh, box that it all fits into. Now, I've tried to show you uh, what this machine is capable of in its various um, iterations uh, and uh, I must tell you there's, there's nothing wrong with these cuts whatsoever uh, and I have no hesitation in saying that these uh, three variations are absolutely super. Now don't just take my word for it, why not go to a woodworking show and find the DeVault stand? Uh, you'll be able to see the machine demonstrated and they may even be able to let you have a go yourself. You'll certainly be able to handle the machine. Now here in the UK, uh, I'll be going to the DNM show this October and they have a very big DeWalt stand. Perhaps I'll see you there. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, bye-bye.